Ukraine has won a decisive victory in the 29th week of the war, reclaiming an estimated 8,000 square kilometers, 3,090 square miles, of northeastern territory from Russian forces, inflicting a serious blow to Russian morale and convincing their Western allies that Kyiv could defeat Moscow. The recent battlefield successes also suggest that Kyiv's goal of re-establishing the country's 2014 borders may be achievable. Ukraine has pledged to regain control of Crimea Peninsula annexed by Russia in 2014. The entire Donetsk region will be liberated, predicted Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky as his forces stood poised to take the strategic town of Izium, suggesting Ukrainian forces will soon press their advantage east. But U.S. President Joe Biden warned against great expectations, saying the war would be a long haul. Still, Ukraine may have turned a corner in procuring weapons it says it desperately needs. German daily Süddeutsche Zeitung said the U.S. is now considering sending to Ukraine the Western main battle tanks and infantry fighting vehicles it has been crying out for. In an interview with Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz did not rule out sending his country's heaviest tank, the Leopard 2, to Ukraine saying, we will, coordinate closely with our allies. The situation is dynamic. Ukraine's counteroffensive in the northern Kharkiv region began even as another counteroffensive in the south, begun a week earlier continued to unfold. Ukrainian forces took Baliklia, their first major prize, and came within 15 kilometers, 9 miles, of the key logistics hub of Kapiansk, Lieutenant General Oleksiy Gromov said Ukraine's counteroffensive had advanced to a depth of 50 kilometers, 31 miles, behind enemy lines, reclaimed 700 square kilometers, 435 square miles, and secured 20 settlement. Ukraine has won a decisive victory in the 29th week of the war, reclaiming an estimated 8,000 square kilometers, 3,090 square miles, of northeastern territory from Russian forces, inflicting a serious blow to Russian morale and convincing their Western allies that Kyiv could defeat Moscow. The counteroffensive picked up speed the following day, liberating 30 settlements and 1,000 square kilometers, 621 square miles. Moscow installed administrator for Kharkiv, Vitaly Ganchev, admitted that Kyiv had scored a substantial victory. Russia's defense ministry announced it was rushing reinforcements to the area, as it was caught off guard by the Ukrainian push. It released video of a convoy of vehicles setting out from Ryhorodka in Luhansk region, south of Kharkiv. Ukrainian forces recaptured the western half of Kapiansk, which lies astride the Oskil River, and advanced south along the river to reach the outskirts of Izium, which they recaptured the following day. At its northern extreme, the counteroffensive marched to the Russian border, taking Vivchansk, north of Kharkiv city. Ukraine recaptured 20 settlements on September 12, re-establishing control as far north as Ternova on the Russian border and as far east as Dvorchina on the west bank of the Oskil River. Although the Kremlin admitted defeat on September 13, it originally claimed it was tactically retreating from the area west of the Oskil River, which now forms the new front line. Some observers told Al Jazeera the Russians did indeed plan a tactical retreat, aware of a coming counteroffensive, yet there is more evidence pointing to a rout. Soldiers of the 1st Motor Rifle Regiment based in Izium wrote en masse to their commander on August 30 asking for leave, suggesting they knew of the coming battle. Leave would have been unnecessary in a planned withdrawal. Russia said its tactical retreat meant to prioritize the fight for Donetsk region in the east, but Ukraine's advance to the Oskil now exposes all that Russia has gained in Luhansk and Donetsk to an attack from the north. Russian forces doggedly continued their offensives to capture Bakhmut, a communications node in Donetsk.